Hello everyone, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. In today's video, we are going for their sewing needs. We are going to sew one garment and we are gonna use more than 10 stitches combinations. So let's go. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Well, well, I have all the pieces of a neat blouse and we are going to assemble it together using different kind of stitches. I did my own pattern today and please let me know in the comment if you like to make your own patterns too. This is the flat design I made and to make things easier, I'm gonna start assembling the front and then the rest. So I'm gonna start by sewing the two pieces of lace to the big piece, but first I need to gather a little bit at the top. My pattern is showing where I need to gather and then I will just sew the two pieces together. I'm gonna start today using this Seraflex thread on the top. It's a little bit elasticized, unlike the regular thread that I'm going to use at the bobbin. I'm gonna make two parallel stitches with a loose thread tension to facilitate the gathering. The gathering is just in a small portion. I think I might do it bigger, but let's see. Now I'm ready to sew the two pieces and as you can see, even though the lace is a net, it doesn't stretch that much. This is why I can choose to start the straight stitch, which is the most unlikely stitch when sewing knits. Always before you are starting your job with the knits, it's very important that you try sewing a little bit with a swatch in your machine and then you can make all the adjustment you need. In this case, I had the bobbin a little bit too loose. I tighten up and now it's good. This is the simplest form to sew it. You finish your first straight stitch, then you cut the excess of seam allowance to one quarter. Then you set your material for zigzag and a stitch again a little bit closer to the border. Pretty basic, any machine can do it. And a good alternative to clean out the first thread stitch is using a three thread serger. Please notice something very important. Look at this sign. It says that you can use only these kind of needles, HA1SP. And look at that. These are the super stretch needle we mentioned before. It will allow your serger to sew the needs way better. Redo the first zigzag we did before. <laughs> I did those gathering there as a structural component, which probably wasn't that needed because we are talking about needs. Now that we have the front part all done, finishing our garment will be so easy. We are going to sew the front and back and we are going to start by the shoulders, which is a really delicate seam as you don't want it to lose its shapes. So after the stray stitch, I'm gonna search with the clear tape at the same time, but I fail to sew it completely as I don't have any tape attachment in my serger. So when I do the other one, what I'm gonna do is to stitch the clear tape with my straight stitch and then I'm going to search on top. And that way I secure a really, really stable stitch that is really needed in the shoulder. To be honest, when I first designed this blouse, I did it without the shoulder seam to avoid the inconvenience of this stitch. But I decided to change that for a more regular cut as I didn't want it to pass this opportunity to show you that seam. Okay, let's go to the side seams. And as you already know, this is one of the seams that is more pulled when we are dressing and undressing. But I still want a straight stitch as I wanna have a little bit of seam allowance. So I'm just choosing the triple straight stitch, which is very strong, although it works exactly as the regular straight stitch. I'm gonna use it with the regular thread instead of the set of legs, and I'm going to sew the other side to show you that it will stretch in the same way. It will be very strong. This is the to-go stitch 
when you want a stretch stitch in an active area. Then I finished that with the serger and it's looking really, really good. I have to clarify that you shouldn't leave so much seam allowance, but you know me. Now is the sleeve length and I cut four pieces of each. The curved hem will look better if the sleeve is lined. You can spray starch if the edges are bothering you too much. You can spray iron and then you can do, if you like, a second round. And it's very important that you leave it dry on the flat surface. This makes the job easier, although it makes the knit a little bit heavier and it might cheat on you, it might let you think that your job it will look always in one way that is false so be careful when you use it i'm pinning the two pieces together and because i'm too lazy to make one different piece for the lining i make sure that the lining is a little bit lower so the top part can fold in and i'm going to use an elongated zigzag stitch that i'm going to sew over a neat tape so at the same time, I will get flexibility and stability, which is precisely what you are looking for on the hem of this blouse. Notice that this zigzag is kind of looking to be straight, but they are not straight, they are really zigzag. And when you open and check off the seam, it looks like a straight stitch. This is a great alternative for a straight stitch seam. And of course, you will need an under stitch. And in this case, I'm going to choose a feather stitch. Don't ask me why, but this works so well as a top stitch on knits. And at the same time, it looks really decorative. Anyways, nobody will see it because it's inside. I'm gonna close the sleeve and iron everything and it will look really, really great. So you see, a little tweaks here and there will elevate the look of your garment from a t-shirt to a blouse. I'm closing up the side of my sleeves using exactly the same zigzag stitch I used before. And before sewing it to the garment, I'm gonna make sure to sew it all the way around so they don't slip when I do my next stitch. I don't know if you noticed, but now the curve doesn't look curved. It looks more like a straight, huh? That's geometry. I'm gonna pin my sleeve to my body and working with my colleagues, they are split 50-50 in how to approach sewing the sleeves. A lot of them say that it's safer to sew with the sleeve underneath so the thick dog will shrink a little bit the sleeve which is usually bigger than the body. I'm using now the serger but with the fourth thread which will sew and finish the seam at the same time. The second way is having the sleeves on top. Some of my colleagues say that that way you have a better control of what the sleeve which is bigger is doing. I feel that both ways look great and probably the option one will be better for knit while option two is better for woven. And remember that when you iron knit, you cannot really press your fabric onto the knit because you will mark it. And now we are almost done and I didn't want it to pass the opportunity to show you that we can use a knit interfacing when we are working on knits. I'm gonna make it a little bit different than the sleeves as I'm gonna sew first the sides together and then I will sew the two pieces together. And I'm doing exactly the same as I did that I slip a little bit the lining before sewing it. And because this collar is so wide and won't have too much of the stress and we really want a structure here, I'm going to start with the same zigzag stitch, but the under stitch, I'm going to make it a straight. And like I did with the sleeve, I'm going to secure the two pieces together so they don't move when I attach to the body. 
And after I pin it, I'm going back to my domestic machine and I'm gonna choose today the overcast stitch. The overcast stitch will sew and clean the collar at the same time. It is recommended for collar as it will stand any stretch that the collar might have. Although ours won't have too much of a stretching. And after you do this one, you can do a double top stitch using the double needle. But because of the fashion of my shirt, I will just leave it like that. And I'm going to work with the hem now. And yes, for this, I'm gonna use the double needle. When I was making my swatch to try the machine, the machine just broke. Mm -hmm. This machine served me very well. I bought this machine two weeks after I came to Canada because I decided to participate in the first Ottawa Fashion Week. I bought it together with the searcher you see in the video. She and me have a very nice history. So I think I'm going to try to repair it. But for now, we are going to change our strategy for the hem. We are going to make a kind of invisible hem with our serger, but we don't want it to look too ugly. So we are going to use the right thread color. I use color thread all the way so you can see what I was doing, but this is inside. <laughs> So I had my hem prepared before, but we are going to add a new step. We are going to fold it again, leaving around 3 8 of the inch. In my case, I'm just leaving around one quarter because I didn't calculate that and I don't want to lose length. Then I'm going to my serger and I want you to notice something that is extremely important. I'm using the left needle and the needles are marked on the foot. So as I don't have a foot guide, I have to be very careful while sewing this hem. The folding part has to be in between the two needles. If I pull it to the right, I will cut it. If I pull it to the left, I won't catch the material. So keeping that in mind, you are going to sew all the way around and when finished, make sure to sew over about two inches because usually the beginning is not so good. If you don't wanna live through the stress of cutting the material, you can drop the knife before you start your sewing. Particularly, I don't like this one so much, but keep in mind that if you are bubbling your material because you don't care because you don't have knife, the finished result won't be that great. Coming back to our hem, when you finish, you just need now to iron it, like pulling it a little bit, and then you iron all the way around. And as you can see, you can see a little bit of the thread coming up, and this is the way it should look. And this is the result. This is my blouse, and I think it looks pretty similar to my original design. If you find this video useful, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe, share, comment. Bye!